All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kiverno series, Meet the People Behind Kiverno. And I'm your host today, Shooting Zhao. And I'm super excited to have Marcel Miller with me. Marcel, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, thank you very much, Shooting. Um, yeah, Marcel, I'm a platform engineer at Giant Swarm. Um, I've been working on Kiverno since like six months now. I think time flies, like <laughs> it has yeah. been a while. Um, in my day-to-day -day job, yeah, as a platform engineer, I, I work on different Kubernetes operators most of the time. Um, so, so all written in Golang and um, yeah, mostly operators and also operational side things like on the DevOps direction now with GitOps and stuff like that. So that's my current focus. Thank you, Marcel. Uh, welcome to the series. And for those who just joined, we started this program really to highlight our community members and get to know their stories with Kiverno. So, Marcel, can you can you tell let, uh, like can you tell us a bit more about your current role with Kiverno, and what are you currently focusing on? Yeah, so in Kiverno, I've been a maintainer now for a few months. Um, my main focus is um, mutation inside of Kiverno. So this is really the part I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, and this kind of comes from, from how I got into Kiverno, I would say, because um, when I first discovered the project, um, I was um, actually linked to it by a coworker of mine. Um, th there was a real problem in our company and in, in my brain, I would say, with um, mutating webhooks in Kubernetes because they always seemed extremely hard to manage and all the existing solutions um, seemed very cumbersome to deal with. So when I found um, Kiverno through my coworker, at first I was a bit skeptical, um, but then the more I got into it, I, I really discovered that, hey, um, this really helps us do mutating webhooks and really reason about mutating webhooks. So not only have a, a nice interface to create new ones, but also reason about existing ones. And that's how I then got into the project to kind of work on this specific feature set of, of mutating webhooks and improving Kiverno along the way. Um, so, so mostly spawned out of my need to have um, support around um, mutating webhooks or, or more support and then discovered Kiverno and really saw, hey, this could go somewhere and this could really be helpful to me and then put more effort into it to also contribute to make it yeah, better for, for my use cases as well. Awesome. So by the way, Marcel is the maintainer of the Kiverno project and he had brought a lot of good things into Kiverno and along with his folks, apparently. <laughs> so um, actually that's my, that's, that's my like the second question since you're using mutate policy mostly, like I'm interested to know more about that use case. Like what kind of use case do you have and do you wanna address with Kiverno mutate ability? Yeah, so um, one thing we um, worked on a lot was Giant Swarm itself as a Kubernetes um, service provider. So, so what we do is we, we have a product where we manage Kubernetes. And for that, we want to give our customers um, very direct access to manage resources um, themselves. So that means, for example, we use cluster API now very heavily um, and allow our users to create cluster API resources themselves. And one thing that we discovered very early on was that sometimes for users, it's very hard to decide like what should be the default for a value. And um, for that, one approach is to, to use a um, mutating webhook that then defaults the specific value for a custom resource. So this is a big focus we had um, early on. And with Kiverno, it became really easy to have a set of rules that you could see these are applied to a specific type of custom resource and then see, okay, if I input no value, most likely this is going to come out of it. Or if I input some other value, something else might come out of it. Um, and that really helped us to make it transparent on um, what the mutating webhook is doing. So not only give some kind of way to have mutating webhooks, but also make it transparent between users to see, hey, this is the set of rules and I can try also locally to see this is going to be the outcome if I apply my custom resource. So that has been really awesome. helpful for us. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, it sounds like most of your use cases are using the mutating webhook to, you know, patch the mission request, but I know, um, there are also like other feature requests to kind of post mutate based on the existing resources. I don't yes. know if you, 
you have such use cases or? So sometimes we have such use cases. Um, currently, so sometimes we do do this. Um, the one problem we found a little bit with um, this is it clashes a little bit with GitOps um, workflows. So a lot of the right. time, um, people want to use GitOps workflows, but still have a level of defaulting. And for example, Flux does it in a way that they first dry run your request, then put all the changes in, and then Flux will apply them. If you then later on um, start again changing the object, um, it didn't really work for us currently so much. I can see where use cases like this exist. It's just for us right. um, internally. Uh, you then get into a fight between like, for example, Flux and your <laughs> uh, and Kiverno, which is not really desirable for us. Um, yeah. But just to expand really quickly, um, we, we also use the validation features now more and more, mm -hmm. mostly because we've realized that being able to easily create validation routes is also extremely helpful. Previously, what we did for a long time was um, so, so we have a lot of developers on our team, right? And developers also love writing code. So a lot of the time we would write admission controllers in Go just directly. Um, but with that also comes a, a burden in my opinion. And the burden is uh, maintainability. W whatever code you write, you also need to maintain yourself. And this okay. is really where, where I believe a, a policy management like Kiverno is, is really powerful because you can spend more time working on the code you actually want to work on and less time on maintaining your, your self-written admission controller, because now you can just write a Kiverno policy, you can write unit tests against it, you can um, write integration tests against it, and then not worry about it anymore that, I don't know, your, your Go version is out of date or something, and you need to update your Go modules and so on, because now it's all handled by Kiverno. And this is what we're doing more and more. So we're kind of defining Kiverno more and more as an interface of, these are the policies we have, and then you can very easily see these are the validation policies we have, these are the mutating policies we have, and it just gives us more clarity and frees up more time for other things. Yeah, yeah, glad to hear that Kiverno helped there. All right, um, as you know, 160 is out today with lots of good features and enhancements. And by the way, we did a CNCF live stream recently and highlighted exciting enhancements in this release. And I believe the, the recording is available on social media. So feel free to check it out. Um, okay, back to my question. Like, what are you most excited about Kiverno? Not just for 1.6, but the entire project. I think for me, the most exciting part is going to be integration with other tooling. Um, so it's not only going to be using Kiverno, but also integrating Kiverno policies with other tools to make them aware that these policies exist. What, what I would really like to see in the future would be currently a lot of projects specify their own admission controllers. For example, in cluster API, each component has their own admission controller running that does admission control for them. If it would be possible to set a flag to say, hey, I don't want to run this admission controller anymore. I instead mm -hmm. want you to just install these Kiverno policies. This would make our life a lot easier because I think, I, I personally think um, that a big flaw in Kubernetes right now is how multiple, for example, validating webhooks can interact so that one broken validating webhook can impact your entire cluster performance. And for that, each added um, validating webhook is to me another point of failure in the admission chain. And kind of centralizing this and having just one <laughs> admission controller right. that you can debug and you can easily find would be a great enhancement um, for operators of Kubernetes clusters, in my opinion, which right now is not possible because each open source solution kind of goes the way of implementing their own admission controller and then registering mm -hmm. it somehow. And then you have like leftovers and so on, um, which I think if we can get into that direction, I would be super happy. Right, right. That's actually an interesting topic. I think, you know, even when we designed the Kiverno initially, we're gonna, we have this plan to have the policy engine exportable or pluggable to any of the external libraries, right? Just, I don't know if you have checked whatever uh, the latest in Kiverno about 
uh, sorry, in Kubernetes about PSA, policy yeah. admission uh, controller, I believe. Um, so they also have a library that is exportable and even in Kubernetes, we're, we're trying to see if we can leverage that and reuse it and like as par part of Kubernetes, right? So yeah, I think that's, that's definitely an interesting topic and I would love to explore more about it. And um, since, you know, Kubernetes use CRD to extend its, its functionality, similarly, we can see how Kubernetes can be used in that way somehow. Exactly, like that would be really nice if, if we can get to that state where uh, I don't think every project needs to adapt it, but like a significant part would, would adapt it. That, that would be super cool to me because um, yeah, the operational, the operational effort of admission controllers, I think is often ignored. Um, and, and that's something where Kivano helps in my opinion, because where previously you had like four admission controllers and you needed to debug each one of them. Um, mm -hmm. If you only have Kiverno, you have a lot less to reason about and you can reason more about like which order were they executed and what happened here and so on. So that yeah. is really a benefit in, in my opinion. Agree. All right. Excellent. And thank you, Marcel, for your time. And I think that's all, that's all we have today. And thanks for watching. Again, if you want to get involved, start using Kiverno, join our Slack channel. And of course, you can also contribute to the project as well. And thank you, everyone. I'll see you next. Thank you. <laughs>